Hi, I'm Shannon, one of the librarians here at Naperville Public Library, and we're here today to talk about classic Chicago treats. So if you're from the Chicago area, you're certainly familiar with many of these. And even if you're not from Chicago, a lot of these classic treats are uh, ubiquitous all around the country. So let's see how many you know. Let's get started. So Chicago is one sweet town. The National Confectioners Association was founded here in 1884. And uh, candy companies, big and small, have been flocking here ever since. So let's see how many of these you remember. Uh, Demet's candy brand started here as a soda fountain and candy store owned by George Demet in Chicago in 1898. And Turtles, the caramel nut cluster candy, were created there. And Demet's was sold to Nestle in 1988 and uh, turtles were branded as Nestle's turtles for a time, but after further acquisitions and trades, the brand was revived and they are currently sold as Demet's turtles. Uh, the Wrigley Company, probably everyone's familiar with, was started in 1891 in Goose Island, Chicago, and William Wrigley Jr. gave away chewing gum as an incentive with his true product, which was baking powder, uh, but the gum was more popular, so he decided to go with that. Uh, 1893 was when they came up with Juicy Fruit and Spearmint. Eight 1914 was when they came up with Double Mint, and 1975 was when they came out with Freedent and Big Red. And the advertising campaign with the twins as spokespeople for the Double Mint gum began in 1939. So Frederick William Ruckheim, a popcorn peddler on Chicago's streets, cooked up a new treat in time for the World's Fair in Chicago in 1893. And in 1896, the name Cracker Jack was registered, and this was slang at the time for anything first rate. That's a Cracker Jack. In uh, 1907, the song Take Me Out to the Ball Game featured the lyric, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack, which was free advertising for them, so that's pretty cool. Uh, in 1916, the mascots Sailor Jack and his dog Bingo first appeared on boxes in an advertising for Cracker Jack. And in 1912 is when Surprise Toys first appeared, but as of 2016, there are no tangible toys in the box, just codes to play games on the Cracker Jack app. Uh, Tootsie Roll started in 1896 with a single product. Uh, the company was named after the founder's five-year-old daughter, whose nickname was Tootsie. In uh, 1931, the Tootsie Pop, a lollipop with the filling of the Tootsie Roll, was created and it was popular actually with Dust Bowl refugees because of its low price. And a commercial from 1970 featuring Mr. Owl asked, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie? pop. The world may never know, but kids still write in to guess. Uh, Brock's Candy was founded in 1904 when Emil Brock invested his life savings of $1,000 in a candy shop at North Avenue and Town Street in Chicago, which he named the Palace of Sweets. And he started with one kettle, but by 1923, Brock's had four factories, making products like candy corn and nougats, and jelly bird eggs, uh, maple nut goodies, and others. Uh, but in 1958, the pick-a-mix concept was introduced, and here patrons could scoop out what they wanted, and then they paid one price per pound. And Brock's is now part of the Ferrera Candy Company. Speaking of which, Ferrera Pan was founded in 1908 in Forest Park, and they made classic pan candies such as Atomic Fireballs and Boston Baked Beans and Lemon Heads and Red Hots. And in 2012, they merged with Farley's and Sather's Candy Company from Minnesota to form the Ferrera Candy Company. Now, Fannie Mae started in 1920, Within 15 years of the first store opening in the Loop, there were about four dozen in the Midwest. And Fannie Mae followed their original recipe during World War II, unlike some companies that changed recipes due to scarcity or rationing, but they stuck with their original. 
1920, they came out with buttercreams. In 1946, they introduced pixies, which were chocolate, caramel, and pecan candies. In 1963, they came up with the mint meltaways. And in 1972, they introduced Trinidad's, which were dark chocolate truffle with white confection and coconut enrobing. Uh, Andes mints got their start in Chicago. Uh, Andes Candies, A-N-D-Y apostrophe S, opened in 1920, named after its creator, until he discovered that men didn't like giving their girlfriends boxes of candy with another guy's name on it. <laughs> but Andes fared better when renamed Andes, as in the Andes Mountains, the peak of all candies. Uh, the famous mints went on sale in 1950 in 100 Chicago area Andes stores wrapped in their signature bright green foil, and they've been a popular treat ever since. Now, Margie's Candies opened in 1921 on the north side of Chicago and is still family run. They are known for giant sundaes in white clamshell shaped dishes terrapin candies, which are like turtles, and a soda fountain serving phosphates, sodas, root beer floats, and extra thick shakes. And you can also take home a jar of their homemade hot fudge or caramel too. Now the original rainbow cone started in the Beverly neighborhood on Chicago's south side in 1926. And the flavors are scooped up with a spade and piled in a particular combination with orange sherbet on top as a palate cleanser and chocolate, which is like the heaviest flavor, on the bottom. And in between are pistachio, Palmer House, which is vanilla with cherries and walnuts, and strawberry. Mars, the makers of Mars Bars, Milky Way, Snickers, Three Musketeers, and many other treats, didn't start out in Chicago, but they moved here from Minnesota in 1928. The factory on Oak Park Avenue was the largest candy plant in the world, and the Spanish-style structure with red tile roofs looked more like a club than a factory. Uh, and a couple of little tidbits of trivia here. Did you know that Snickers Bars were named for a horse? and also that Three Musketeers were originally three different flavors. Uh, now here's a popular one with everyone in Chicago, I think. Frango Mints came here when Chicago-based Marshall Fields Department Store acquired a Seattle-based store called Frederick and Nelson, uh, who were the creator of the iconic mints. And Frangos arrived in Chicago in 1929 and were produced in a candy kitchen in the State Street store. Uh, though Marshall Fields was acquired by Macy's in 2005, Frango Mints continued to be sold in Macy's stores to the great relief of Chicago residents. Cunis Candies started on the South Side in 1933, and it opened on 79th Street between Kingston and Colfax, but has been located in South Holland since 1971. And it is still in the same family and uses the original recipes for products such as chocolate dipped strawberries, caramel apples, homemade chocolates, and seasonal ice cream treats such as peach sundaes. Polyronis Paul Stephanos started out selling five cent bags of popcorn in 1936, but learned the candy making trade from his brother and ended up with 12 Cupid candy shops in Chicagoland by the time of his death at age 100. Products such as French mints, fudge, and caramels were popular, and Cupid candies started to make Frango mints for Macy's in July 2009. Dove candies was opened on 60th Street and Pulaski Avenue by Leo Stephanos in 1939. In 1956, to keep his kids from chasing the ice cream trucks, he created a chocolate-covered ice cream bar on a stick, which he called the Dove Bar. And the Dove brand was bought by Mars in 1985. And the Blommer Chocolate Company was founded in 1939 by three brothers in Chicago and branched out nationally by 1948 and today is the largest cocoa processor and ingredient chocolate supplier in the U.S. And you can smell the factory from a mile away. You can also visit the factory store at 600 West Kinsey Street in Chicago. 
And then Garrett Popcorn was originally from Milwaukee, but opened its first Chicago store at 10 West Madison in 1949 and it now has locations worldwide. I actually was very excited to see one when I was in Tokyo and my brother quite couldn't understand why I was so thrilled about it. Uh, the mix of caramel and cheese corn, which was actually a customer creation, is known as Garrett Mix since a small candy shop in Minnesota trademarked Chicago Mix and even threatened to sue Garrett over it. Now, did you know that Garrett uses over 1 million pounds of cheese per year and 20,000 pounds of brown sugar in making their Garrett Mix? Pretty wild stuff, huh? So thank you for watching and learning about some of your favorite classic Chicago treats. I uh, hope you enjoyed this program and that we'll see you again soon at the library. And bye-bye for now.